Hello, everyone. Thank, thank you for joining us today and welcome to another edition of Show Tuesday live with us in Japan. I'm your host, Christopher Pellegrini, and with me as always is Stephen Lyman beaming in from his beautiful apartment in Fukuoka, Japan. I am not in Fukuoka, though I'm still in Okinawa, which means that I have better weather. <laughs> yes, you do, although it's a, it's a nice day here as well. Good morning, Christopher. I've nice got, to see you. Uh, good to see you, too. I've got, I'm going to tell you, it is 24 degrees here today, which is in oh. Fahrenheit, uh, 24, 48, 70. It's a li just shy of 80 degrees. Nice. So it's pretty good. It is fi 15 here, so it's about 60 degrees. Not terrible Not for, for mid-March, I guess. Yep, and we're continuing today with a little bit more content about a great drink for all types of weather, but especially for warmer weather, and that is awamori, the indigenous spirit of the Ryukyu Islands, or what is now Okinawa Prefecture, where I am at the moment and will be for the rest of the month. And just before we get started, I wanted to announce a couple of events, and I'm going to use some of the, the banner technology here, uh, something that for our viewers who are in the United States of America, it's a chance for you to actually win a trip to Okinawa. And that's by creating a reel in Instagram. And this is the whole Awamori Time campaign where they are hoping to influence people to get more into Okinawan culture and especially its favorite drink, Awamori. And you can show your enthusiasm for this drink by recording a reel. If you go to the listed website down here, you can learn all about the rules, the regulations, and the prizes. The top prize being a $3,000 voucher, essentially, for travel with JTB, which is one of the major tourism or travel outfits here in Japan. And they will help you get situated down here in Okinawa for what I am sure would be an absolutely epic experience. That sounds like a lot of fun. I don't know if it's available to domestic uh, participants. It is but, not. It's uh, only for yeah. people who are in the United States, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, the Awamori Time contest. I mean, we definitely experienced a little bit of Awamori Time last week while we were <laughs> together in Okinawa. And uh, it <laughs> a bit. really is it's such a unique place. I mean, it's Japanese, but not Japanese. It's like Hawaii, right? It really is this tropical paradise with all the conveniences of Japan, but more that comfortable island life, right? Mm -hmm. We learned we learned the expression uh, from one of the locals, right? Where, what was the, you remember this that June told us about? The expression that they use when they're late for work, right? Oh, oh just I say, just, for anything that happens, they just say dakara ne or dakara da or something like that, yeah. That's right, and it, it just means because. There's no, yep. like, normally in Japan, you're going to explain something and they, you know, and use dakara as the because. But in Okinawa, they just say dakara. Yep. Because. That's like, right. Why were you late? Mm, dakara. Dakara ne. Just right, happened. I mean, that was how we ex explain the con constant construction outside of my apartment that you'll, everyone out there, you'll love this. The first week we were here, we're renting an apartment. First week, every damn morning and wake up to construction directly across the street not more than 30 meters from the bed is they're ripping up in a par uh, parking lot and then mystically they were done or at least it all had been turned to smooth evenly laid out gravel and it was peace there was peace for a good three days there and then it started again guess what they're doing they're putting in an, in a new parking lot <laughs> uh, I'm sure it'll be bigger and better and better than the first one. And when I told this story to to who uh, Stephen's referencing right now, Juno Gawa, a friend of ours down here, he splits his time between Tokyo and Okinawa. And he said, Dakara ne. And it was the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, just because. Yeah. You know, and it's, it, I guess, where, where we live, Stephen, we might say something along the lines of Shoganai or it can't be helped. Yeah. But I, it kind of has a different nuance than that, I think. Yeah, I think it does too, because Shogunai is a little bit of regret. It's just like, that's life. These things happen. But, you know, sorry about that almost, right? It's a little more nuanced 
in that direction where exactly. is just sort of like, yeah, you know, whatever. Cool. <laughs> and we just got a question in from Chris Caldwell and he asked, do you have to be a gym nerd to enter this particular contest? And the answer is no, you do not. Um, absolutely not. Absolutely not. There are not many, yeah. there are not many gym nerds at this point. And gym nerds are the folks I think living outside of Japan that are doing their part to promote Awamori to a worldwide audience and will will be, um, I think you'll see that word a lot more in the future, but I think this is open to everyone and anyone who has, you know, some way of expressing their joy and enthusiasm for Okinawan culture and, and Awamori in particular. Uh, it could That's be right. anything. I mean, the two big things that I think of when I think of Okinawa are karate, karate, and awamori. Yep. I don't know. I think Maybe of, they go together. I think of Naha shirts. I don't know if that's what they call them, but they're essentially Aloha shirts that people wear. In uh, they call them kariyushi. K-A-R-I-Y-U-S-H-I. Kariyushi. Yeah. And oh. uh, it, it's a lot of the, the fabrics that are used are very bright and colorful, as you would expect in an island culture. Um, but yeah, yep. the Aw awamori contest, I, I would... If I was still living in New York, I would absolutely be putting a reel together, cobbling together whatever photos and video I might have taken <clears throat> on my previous trips to Okinawa. Um, it's a it's a special place. I really, you know, that that was the most time I'd spent there. Uh, I was down there for a little over a week, and I really, really enjoyed myself. I got to I felt like I got to know it much better than I had on my previous very short trips. My first trip was my first time in outside of like Tokyo and Osaka. So I was just sort of overwhelmed and I was out on Miyakojima for two days. Then I was in Naha for a three day conference and then I was gone yeah. and the conference took up a lot of my time when I was in Naha. So I, um, and then I went back in 2019 for the Okinawan Whiskey Fest. It was the first whiskey festival in Okinawa. And I didn't have, that was a weekend. I was there for two or three days. I, you know, did some networking and, you know, that sort of thing, but really not a lot of time visited some distilleries. But this time I had a little bit of bandwidth, a little bit of time to just wander around the city and explore, you know, and then yeah. uh, obviously you and I went up for our little, our brainstorming session up north and uh, just really got a much better sense of place. And I can't wait to go back. I mean, yeah. it's really, really a, a lovely place. So if you have mm -hmm. not been to Okinawa and you really, really, really want to go to Okinawa, Put a, put a reel together. Yeah. I want more see, if you can, see if you can you can make it. The, Apparently, those, these reels are going to be judged on creativity, uh, energy, and then, you know, obviously the visual aspect as well. But there will be multiple angles that will be considered. So you don't have to be a professional reel stir, reel maker, reel genie, or whatever they're called to win this. I think it just has to be fun. Yep. Sure. And a little splash of Aomori probably wouldn't hurt. Yep, at, at the beginning end and twice in between. So uh, that's yeah. hey, one thing that's have coming you... up, an opportunity. Yep. I'm sorry, have you ever What's made up? a reel? I have not. Uh, that's Neither not have entirely I. true. I think I might have once. Yeah, I, 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 think I, I wouldn't know once. where to start. Are there like real tutorials? Are there ways to learn how to do I'm this? Sure there are. It's basically, it's basically similar to doing a live. I'm looking at my... I'm looking at my Instagram account now. Do I have any reels? Are these reels? I think it's like a TikTok. Those are not reels. Sort of... That's a reel. Oh, I have a few reels. Oh, do you? I have three. I've done three, apparently. And probably oh. I thought I was doing a live, and that's why. But <laughs> I don't know. I haven't looked at them in a while. Um, yeah, I, I just figured out there are as... instructions on the website there, so you okay. can get your tutorial, and they'll tell you what to do. Good. Yeah. I look forward yep. to seeing what people come up with. The, the, the I do, too. Pretty, pretty clever. But I guess they had a little bit of budget and time to think about it. This the deadline's soon, right? It's in about a week. It's the twenty second, I think. So it is okay. next week. So you do have to get on it if you want to participate. You have to upload your reel to your own Instagram with the appropriate tags and using. I think they have some music or background soundtrack that they want you to use. I think they're trying okay. to make it easier. I think they're trying to put guardrails on it for people to participate. Uh, you'll have to go and check it out. I I think yeah. the upside, the three thousand dollar paid trip to okinawa is a hell of a upside there sure so give it a shot As give I it said, a look i'd absolutely be doing this if i was eligible yep me too i would too very nice 
So that's one thing that I have to mention. Yep. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is an event that for us, our time is coming up today. And that's the UK Bartenders Guild uh, UQ Awamori event, which is an online webinar that is free. And I was going to put the the web address here, but it's too long and unwieldy. You have to register beforehand in, in order to get your, uh, your invite. And that's going to go down at 8 p.m. tonight, which is Wednesday, March 17th, Japan time. It is, you notice the UK ukbg there so it is intended i think primarily for a uk audience which puts the start time at what eight here so what 11 a.m in the uk is that the i'm not even sure version? well eight here is it's gonna be 7 a.m in the states and yeah i thought yeah, it was five so hours somewhere ahead somewhere in between yeah, i'm I really don't... sorry <laughs> yeah i don't know what time it's gonna be in the uk maybe around 12 uh, but 11, yeah, somewhere around there. It's a two-hour thing, and it's going to feature uh, the Ryukyu 1429 lineup. It is. And that's something that we just learned about this week. Maybe, Stephen, you could talk about that a little bit. Give me a second, and I can actually show it to people because I have a set here. They're beautiful. A yep, trifecta so is, of gorgeous so bottles. We mentioned Juno Gawa earlier. He's the, the brain trust behind this. The UQ 1429 is a collaboration between three distilleries. Uh, this is an example of the bottle. Sorry, I'm still getting used to the mirroring. Um, yeah, it's and it's, it's, it's got some heft to it. These are in 700s because they're designed for the, for the uh, European market, uh, 700 mLs. But you can see so that we're going to talk a little bit later about the ceramic pots in, in, in Okinawa. You can see the, the outline is of a ceramic pot right in the glass. And then this is embossed, the, the name and this little symbol up here. It's got a clear back label that you can get more information. Um, what, what turned out with these bottles that I thought was really interesting is that um, almost unintentionally, because they designed this for the, for the, for the look, so that they could have something that's modern, upscale looking, uh, but still pay homage to Awamori with those ceramic pot, ceramic pot outline. Yeah. But it ends up making a great pour handle for bartenders. Which is not Don't at drop all. Drop it on the bar. That's right. This is all you so, need. that's a, it's a it's a really cool form factor. They have uh, this is called Mizu. Um, so don't tell Jesse at uh, Mizu. <laughs> um, this one is called Tsuchi. So Mizu means water. Tsuchi means soil or earth. And the third one is called Kaze, and Kaze means fire. Right. So it's water, earth, fire. They missed there a chance go. there. Oh no, Kaze's wind. I'm sorry, Kaze's yeah, yeah, wind. Yeah. So yep. they have earth and wind, but they didn't do fire. They did water. So they could have I named it after a '70s rock band. The... Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, this one's maybe doing that in the future. This one's five years, five year old Awamori in the black bottle. Pretty, pretty cool looking. All of them are very, very beautiful. That you've got Tsuchi has got the gold or bronze, and then uh, Mizu has the silver. Uh, so yeah, really, really beautiful expressions. Um, all of them are 43% alcohol and we didn't do this on purpose, but most undiluted awamori is 43% and this is episode 43. So fortuitous. That was lucky. That, that worked out well. Yeah. So that's the, uh, the UQ 1429. So you're going to learn all about those products. If you can join that UK bartenders guild, uh, right. event. Um, I signed up, yeah. but I actually have, I have conflicts, so Crap. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to make it. Um, yeah, maybe for part it's, of it, uh, 8 p.m. Japan time again, and then, and then going for two hours and you do have to pre-register. So, um, they, and I think it's through, what is that website? Event, it's event, right. Or something right. like that. Okay. Yep. Um, so get on it. I think that will be very educational. I think that I'm sure they're going to talk about cocktails if you happen to be into that sort of thing. And yeah. I and you know June, our friend June is is very passionate about these drinks, and he's a he's a evangelist for the category and for some of the really dedicated makers that are involved in this project. 
So um, show your support yeah. if you've got time, 8 to 10 p.m. Japan time yeah. tonight. And I think it'll be well worth your while. I should be on for most of that until I have to hop off for a call. Yeah, pretty, um, pretty interesting story how that whole project came together. And the Awamori and Shochu makers are not known for working together. Mm. So it was it was quite a journey from concept to uh, delivery. It's a it's a yeah, pretty cool story. So hopefully he'll get into that on the on the show tonight. And if he doesn't, maybe we'll have him on to interview him on a future uh, show Tuesday. I think he'd love to do that. Uh, yep. re really nice guy. And he took us to an incredible museum of Awamori. Now it's not a literal museum. Don't go Googling the Awamori Museum. It's actually yep. a, a place called Bar Sunshine in Naha City in which the owner has been making his own personal blends of his own shitsugi, right? The Solera method that we've talked about on other episodes about how you uh, mix uh, or how you blend vintages of Awamori and it just gets really, really interesting in its flavors. But he he's heterodox. He doesn't only blend uh, the same Awamori in different vintages. He blends Awamori from different places that are different he ages. Does. And he yep. comes up with just these wild combinations and these really interesting flavors. Um, and I'm not sure if there's a method to the madness or not, because there's about two or 300 ceramic pots and large glass bottles scattered around the bar that have, have like somehow tells where they are. Yeah, he does. He keeps some sort yeah, of log, he's got some sort of system. Yeah. yeah. Really interesting yeah. place. And, and if you, if you're interested in just like old Japanese alcohol, you know, domestic alcohol bottlings, he's got stuff from the fifties, sixties. I've never seen before, uh, you know, yep. with liquid fill in the bottles. Uh, you'll pay a pretty penny for it, but he'll let you try some of them. There's a few that are not going to be opened, but um, interesting place. Yeah, bar sunshine. So if you, yeah, if you can make it down, put it on the on the bucket list. Uh, it tends to be a place where a lot of people who are very knowledgeable about awamori hang out. So if you're new to the category, they'll be more than happy to fill you in and and start you off on the on the right path. Um, I did just put the the link. I don't know if you can click on these things. It, you know, yep. via Facebook or whatever. Um, it might be good to actually just drop this in in the comments here. I'm going to do that right now because that probably still still figuring out how this works. Here we go. Control V. There's the link in the comment. Oop, did that work? It did work. Yep. Okay, it went to both YouTube and to Facebook. If you're interested in joining that event later tonight, Japan time, then please sign up at that link below. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, those will both be I, fun events. I mean, well, the I, other one's not really an event, but yeah, make your reel. Maybe watch watch this event that they're doing to, to get inspiration and then go make your reel. Yep, that, that be the I way think that's do. a great idea. And another great idea is to make sure that you go and listen to our latest uh, podcast, which just dropped on Monday, it drops Typically, two Mondays a month on the 1st and the 15th. We did scoot another one in there on the 8th. So now there are four whiskey episodes back to back to back to back. And maybe, Stephen, you can talk a little bit about the – give us the executive summary on this one. Sure, sure. I wasn't planning on all advertising to start the show, but um, we can do this now. Um, yeah, so our the first episode was the the history of whiskey in Japan before it became – internationally famous. The second episode is about how it became internationally famous, as well as how whiskey boomed in Japan, which was not for the same reason as it became, why it became famous. And then a uh, third episode, which is the one that got slotted in early, was the announcement of the new whiskey labeling standards uh, for putting Japanese whiskey on, on the bottle. And mm -hmm. we've, uh, we broke those down in the third episode. And then the fourth episode was more of a brainstorm with Christopher and I talking about, let's say it was January of this year, and we didn't know these standards were coming, how would we define Japanese whiskey in our minds? And that's right. really where we settle out on, you know, uh, our top question is what is whiskey, right? And then uh, is there terroir in whiskey? And then finally, what would we think of as Japanese whiskey? And it was really fun to discuss. And obviously Christopher and I have a soft spot in our hearts for Koji fermentation. So we get into that and whether or not that should mm. be part of the, the conversation. And I think we settled on, yes, it should be, because how you sacrifice your grains really is secondary to something that's made of grains and expresses as a whiskey. Um, yeah. So 
anyway, that was that was a lot of fun. So if you're interested in that topic, please have a listen, uh, rate, review, share, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we're really getting some amazing feedback on the um, on the podcast, and it's always great to hear from people about what you think of the episodes. We'd love to hear topics that you want us to explore. Uh, we got some good ideas recently, um, and we're really just excited to keep pushing forward with the podcast and teach more about these great uh, Japanese distilled drinks. And obviously, this live show is much more just us, you know, talking through things and and you know. What we're thinking about in real time, where this the podcast is obviously more scripted and uh, thoughtful, I guess, in in what it is we're trying to say. Where sometimes we're just meandering here, going going mm -hmm. off on different tangents and things. But uh, yeah, Awamuri, let's let's jump back to that because um, that's really what we're supposed to be talking about today. You know, that's we're getting right. long winded on Streamyard. Have you realized that we're not yeah, twenty minutes in? And we haven't even uh, gotten just into the topic. Getting to the main topic. So this is dangerous. You know, we always had a had a timer on Instagram. It had to be over in an hour. And so we we tried to um tried to keep it to under that an hour. Faithfully. Yep. Because we didn't want to get cut off mid-sentence. But here we're the guardrails are off. So we're gonna have to have to tighten up, I think. But mm -hmm. maybe we'll just talk briefly about, you know, we did I did mention the Shitsugi method earlier, the, the Solera method that's used in Alamari. Yeah. And a really fun aspect is something I've been wanting to explore, and you and I have started to explore, is getting our own ceramic pots and aging our own awamori at home, doing mm -hmm. uh, sec secondary aging. And I think the that that was one of the reasons I was so excited to come to Okinawa this time, or to visit Okinawa last week, was to do a little research and try to find some ceramic pots. And I am very happy to announce that I was successful. <laughs> um, now, I'd, first, I'd like to show you. Um, so, I, I got I got this one. <laughs> now, this Absorbs. is actually, I actually haven't haven't taken it out yet. This I found in a uh, secondhand shop. So, I had heard that you could find alcohol in pawn shops in Japan, but I'd never really explored it until sure. last week. Yeah. Look at this guy. Let's see if I can. <laughs> now this oh, yeah. is. Uh, oh, I think they took they took the tag off. I got to look at the bottom. Sorry. Yeah, this is 120 ml ceramic pot. This is actually from Chuko. Doesn't really okay. look like Chuko, but I don't know if you can That's see how old. Like it. Yeah, how old the. Uh, the seal is it's still unopened. It's got some liquid in there. The 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 shop staff was like he he kind of shook and he's like, it's not full anymore. Is that okay? And I said, yeah, I understand the angel share. Don't worry. Um, so now there's no telling when this is from from. At least I haven't done the research yet. But this is from Chukul. It is. Let me see if I can figure out anything on on here. Uh, it is 43 percent alcohol. Awamori from Chuko, uh, but really cute little form factor. And, uh, you know, this is just sitting on a shelf with a bunch of other little minis. And I was like, oh, and then I looked at the distillery. I was like, oh, I got to take that because we visited Chuko. Chuko is an the, amazing place where we talked about being in the butt to make. It's that small. Yeah, right. Well, I don't know that this is theirs. This this seems like it might predate when they were making their own ceramics. Um, Could be. It doesn't have the same. It's got a it's actually got a white ceramic base. Weird. See that? Yeah, I've so never seen that pro they, no. they probably purchased this from some ceramic maker, uh, but so this is actually might be quite old if it if it's predating when they made their ceramics. When did they start making theirs? Don't recall. Two thousand, I think early two thousands. If I don't, if I recall correctly, um, like really early, like two thousand three, four, five around that time is when they revived their ceramic uh, mm -hmm. production. And and now they're making these really beautiful ceramics, which we shared on the show before. You guys had seen seen this, which we've talked about. This is the Chuko. Yep. This is a seven twenty, I think. Uh, yeah, this is seven twenty. Now this was this is a three year old. When it's in goes in the jar, it's three years old. Now this was bottled in twenty nineteen. Actually, uh, what's today? The seventeenth. So this was bottled yeah. uh, March fourteenth, twenty nineteen. So it just turned five years old. What's in this jar? Right, and this is sort of their standard form factor. You can find this in liquor stores around the country. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and again, 43% alcohol, again, from Chico, but they make this ceramic at the distillery. They have yep. a, an entire building dedicated as a potter studio and kiln. Uh, they, they've they got all of the clay sitting outside. They mix it, they press it, they filter it. They do everything they need to make their own clay using stone from both um, the north end of not, uh, Okinawa Island and the south end of Okinawa Island. So, and it comes up with this really, really nice uh, kind of reddish. Yeah, I don't know how well it's showing up on screen. It's kind of a reddish brown. Um, I don't know that I can do the sound thing that they were that they showed us at the distillery, but um, I think you need a metal thing to. Yeah, yeah, probably. Do I have something metal here? Let's see if you can hear this. Ah, uh, yeah, that works. <laughs> I'm sure that makes for a great, great live television. Um, <laughs> so, so that's that's sort of their standard, and that's that's actually only been fired. Uh, one time you can see that it's it's perfectly I'm really having a hard time with this uh, mirroring the mirror. but so yeah, it's, it's all, all the same pattern all the way around right now that's that's yeah. sort of their standard now but they do this really interesting firing technique and this is the other thing I found at the pawn shop I was kind of making a joke with the mini that I showed you this is a 1.8 liter now this guy this 1.8 liter it was, let me see. This was five years old when it went in the pot. All right. But it was put in the pot in 2009. So this guy is now, what, almost 17 years old. It, now it won't mm-hmm. be 17 until November, but 16 years old. The seal is unopened. So suddenly I've got from a pawn shop in Okinawa, a 17 year old Chuko Awamori. Right, that's mm-hmm. nice and old. Yeah, um, and you can see that the the coloring is not uniform because here on the front of the pot, they've actually scorched using uh, direct flame heating in a in a second, I guess a third and a fourth firing um, of the kiln to give this really beautiful pattern on the jar. It's directly on the jar, and again, mm-hmm. I, as I said, they revived these these this style in two thousand, you know, early two thousand. So two thousand nine is relatively early right Mm -hmm. we're getting back toward the beginning of when they were making these pots there at the distillery but now i've got 1.8 liters of now 17 year old chuko this was only 120 dollars at that pawn shop which shocked me because buying five uh uh, one of these new at the distillery would cost you more than that yeah so i think i think people especially down here don't know what they have sometimes now the other thing that was interesting about that one is it came in this in this box, Re- yeah. actually really oh, nice this. paper, uh, almost cloth like fabric. And then I, I unfortunately stepped on the top as I was taking the thing out. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So really nice box, and uh, so to protect it because a lot of people will buy these and just keep them. They're not really drinking from them, right? So they tend to be gifts. I think for a lot of people who who bring these things back as souvenirs from Okinawa, obviously I will be enjoying mine and doing my own shitsugi. Um, but that 17 is now the oldest chuko I have. So that becomes my, the pot that I drink from. And then I re- refill from younger pots, right? And so I've got this, I've got this three year. I have no idea how old this is and I'm probably not gonna open it for a while. Um, the other thing that I picked up though, let's see. Now this is new, er, this is a 10 year old. Now this form factor is, is this is actually an Isho bean. So this is a 1.8 liter bottle, um, from with 10 year old Chuko. And you can see it's got the same scorch pattern on it. Yeah. That but one's really tall. easy to see. Yeah, it is. This one's this one's well well done, and this is because, this is newer. Maybe right? because it's not round, it's just easier to pick up with the camera. I think it might be, and it could also be that the first part that I showed with the scorching on it, it was early in the production. Now this this I picked up at the distillery, uh, brand new. So this this was bottled in 2021 January. So the five year in here is basically five year. It's yeah, not, that's it a doesn't beauty. have much 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 age on it so this one i'm going to just sort of let sit for a while but it's got 10 year old spirit in it now to get 10 year old spirit in a bottle like this at the distillery is is a pretty penny right um this was i think a little over 200 uh for this it's the same volume as the one that i got for 100 
uh, or a little over 100 at the pawn shop. So I got this for about twice as much. But you can see the form factor mm -hmm. is really something else. It's also a lot of liquid in it, right? People pay 200 bucks for a nice bottle of whiskey. I kind of feel like I got a bargain with this handmade uh, ceramic pot with 10-year-old awamori in it. So that one's really fun. I like the form factor. It's got a wooden cap. It's pretty cool. We got a we got a comment yep. here uh, from Chris. I'm going to throw this up here. Sure. Have you ever encountered shops re reluctant to sell to non-Japanese? I have not. I think the main concern is about whether or not you can get it home. Right. Mm -hmm. they're, you're recommended not to uh, ship these pots in any way that they're going to tip over because they may leak. They have sure. a they have a silicon seal, but especially if you're buying an older pot, it may have a cork. Yeah. If you're buying a really old pot with a really old cork in it, there's every chance that that cork's going to not, yes. not survive tipping over or being upside down or anything like that. So handling of the pot is is a primary concern. So you would need to try to ship it in some way that, you know, it maintains being upright uh, over over its trip. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you can't carry it on an international flight, which you fortunately in Japan, you can hand carry alcohol onto the plane for domestic flights. So for me to get it back to, to Fukuoka would not be difficult, right? I just put it in a hand, hand carry bag and I put it in the overhead bin um, mm -hmm. or in, under the seat in front of me, depending on the size of the pot. But, uh, and also the, they will ship to domestic, domestic addresses they, here within Japan. So I actually had all of these shipped back to me because I didn't want to take the chance of trying to carry it on a plane. But um, if you have a way of getting it home or you're comfortable with the fact that it may leak, um, then you, there's no reason why they wouldn't be willing to sell it to you. The one other thing you have to consider, we haven't really talked about Habushu. Uh, mm -hmm. Habushu has a, has a pit viper, an actual pit viper in the, in the bottle. Uh, unlike the, the Mezcal worm, which is sort of a little bit of a legend, there was one brand of cheap Mezcal that used to do that, but there's, there's never like a lot of it. It's just one specific, really like five dollar bottle of, of mezcal that ever put the worm in there. And apparently, the reason they did it uh, was to uh, demonstrate the proof that it was actually a high proof spirit because the worm would have dis like just dissolved in a lower proof alcohol. It wouldn't have been preserved. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I learned that actually from David Wondrich on their great podcast, uh, Life Behind Bars, which I highly recommend anybody interested in drinks history. Um, the but anyway, they put actual pit vipers in Awamori, and that's called Habushu. And Habushu is not a, not a myth. It exists. You can see it in just about every pretty, bar. Pretty easy to find down here. You can find it all over the place. It's, it's, in the, uh, it's in the airport for sale. The trouble is a lot of countries won't let you get that, take that stuff back into the country. So that's really, they're really going to be worried selling that to a foreigner who doesn't live in Japan because you may not be able to get that back into the States. Right. And they're not in small bottles, right? These are almost like huge, you know, moonshine. Sometimes in jars. Because you got, yeah. You've got the coiled up snake with the, the fangs open. And, yeah. And so. you got to be careful not to shake those things because the snake, which has been prepared accordingly for such an environment, can will begin to sort of kind of disintegrate slightly if you shake it around too much you don't really want that so yeah and that that you definitely need to keep upright you don't want that snake sloshing around inside the jar <laughs> um, so and what's really interesting is when it's been sitting uh, in there for a long time the snake turns white completely white all of the color gets extracted from the snake skin into the, the spirit and the claim with habushu is that it is invigorating because you're getting micro doses of pit viper venom in your spirit, <laughs> which apparently really gives you a lot of energy. It's it's like uh, the Okinawan version of a of a Red Bull, I guess. And oh, the first time I ever tried it was uh, one night out in Tokyo. I was in Golden Guy, and it was the first time I'd ever seen it on a bar. It was one of my first visits to Japan, and it's late. The bartender's like, oh, let's try this, you know, sort of as because that's a sorry, sort of an emote nashi thing in any sort of Okinawan place is give give the foreigners a shot of habushu <sighs> just, just for fun. Emote what a wonderful nashi, service. Japanese hospitality, right? And I I it must have been two in the morning and I, I took that shot and I was buzzing until about 5 a.m. Like I could not fall asleep. So that stuff is powerful. Um, but those are gonna be harder to get 
get out of the country and bring home, I think, than even these ceramic pots. We just had a conversation about that too. And there was some discussion of number one, especially from the American government's perspective, is the pit viper in danger? That's a big question, apparently. That's one of the most Mm -hmm. important questions. Not the fact that you're bringing snakes on a damn plane. The question is, (laughs) is it, was it an endangered snake? Which I think is a valid question. Um, So there was a bunch of people had different opinions. Nobody seemed to be able to get, you know, a solid answer on this. It's, Mm -hmm. we don't know. I've been asked that question a couple of times. I have no idea. My answer would be no, you can't get it back into the States. Because I know some people have tried to import it commercially. Like, is that, do you think that's possible? Like, probably not. Why would they, why would they allow you to import that? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, But I would have to very well be wrong. Yeah. Now, yeah. You know, I guess the thing is, is I don't under, I don't necessarily know how luggage is inspected, but if <laughs> there's a snake skeleton the in the top, X, yeah. if the x-ray shows up with a snake skeleton in it, you're probably going to get your bag checked. <laughs> they're yeah. probably inspecting that. <laughs> and if they don't, then they're not doing their job very well. I don't want to yeah. be flying with that airline, you know? Yeah. So on the other hand, if they see a ceramic pot in there, they might not care. So you're probably more likely to be able to get uh, aged sawamori, and if you're, and again, if you're, if you're willing to accept that there may be some leakage from that silicon with a plastic seal on it, the nice thing about the leakage is it doesn't matter in the long run because once you got the pot over, you can do your own shitsugi, your own solera. Um, and so what you, what I actually did, remember, there's I have the the mystery pot that I got from from our good Maurice. friend Maurice Dudley. Yeah. He gave me uh, this amazing pot, which I'm not going to dig out right now because it's kind of buried, but it's uh, it, and it had no label on it. So we did a lot of research. We actually found out through a Twitter expert that it was from the Sakimoto distillery, um, which turns out it's a very small distillery. Uh, used to be near Shuri Castle. They recently moved up north uh, to Ryukyu Mura, but they haven't actually started making anything new yet. Uh, at at the new location because they just reopened in in April and everything kind of got shut down. So what I spent my time doing was running around Naha looking for bo- old bottles of Sakimoto that I could use for my Shitsugi for that Kame, for that pot. Mm-hmm. And I ended up finding four bottles of 11-year-old Sakimoto that I can now pour into that pot as I'm refilling. So that's what I would recommend is if you're going to take one of these pots home, find some bottled spirit from the same distillery so you can start doing your own shitsugi once you get back to your country right um, and and that yeah. way you can uh you know just keep 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 on giving it's a gift a gift that keeps on giving uh the other thing that you can probably do I, at least i know in the states what's available is if you get a pot from zuisen ryukyu ocho shima uta um there are a couple other brands uh, available, unfortunately, I'm not going to remember all them. Uh, Mizuho as well. You pick up those, um, a, a ceramic pot from those places, and you can do your shitsugi with what's available in the States. The trouble is, most of that comes in at 25% alcohol. And a 25% distillate in these pots is not going to get near the character as a higher proof one. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, these are the concessions we make, I guess with what's available yeah. right now in the U S but that's, that's a, a fun thing that people could do. Um, before I forget, I do want to show you the last Kame that I got, the last pot that I got from Chuko. Um, it is not the oldest, ugh, but it is the biggest. Yeah. So this guy, <laughs> nice. He is a uh, three Isho bean worth of five year old spirit. That's 5.4 uh, liters. 5.4 liters. This is heavy. My shoulder hurts right now. Um, but it's it's again got the scorching on it. And, yeah. um, you know, nice earthenware pot. Of course, if you finished this and didn't want to refill it with new spirit, it becomes a, a nice uh, flower pot. Right. It's, a, it's actually that pretty thing's good so heavy. Here. It could be a doorstop, too. Well, more than a doorstop. Yeah, you could. Well, at least a very big door. It's very, very heavy. And that's and very, very floor. expensive, too, when you buy those things at the distillery. That's right. That was that was my biggest purchase of the trip. Um, but with five-year-old spirit in it, that's the one I will actually move into the the older pot, right? So that 1.8 liter uh, that came in the orange box, this guy will be my drinking pot because that's the oldest distillate, right? Right. Now this, 
The second oldest is actually in this guy here. Okay. The 1.8 liter tower. So I, I would probably start to refill this from that if I don't want to just keep that as a sort of a, you know, a pretty form factor. And then the big pot starts to fill, like the big pot starts to go into this, this goes into here. Right. And then this is my, and this is now my youngest make, right? So this stuff ends up going into- That's at the very beginning, no? Yeah, that's at the very beginning. Now, Chuko in my local liquor store sells bottled three year. So I get it, I get a 1.8 liter bottle of the three year that refills this guy. This guy refills uh, the big guy. The big guy refills the tall guy. The tall guy refills this guy. The old guy. And then, then I've got uh, my my Chuko Solera system or Shitsugi going, going. That's very, pretty good. Well. That's four four pots, four vintages, yeah. essentially. Yep. Yeah. All forty three percent, all from Chuko. So it was a little bit of an investment, but now I can do my own Solera here in my apartment, here in my <clears throat> home bar. But I also have the, a similar thing with Sakimoto, except all I'm doing is pouring from old bottles into the old pot, the older Just pot. Just refreshing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we'll get there. You know, I don't know how many of these I can really fit in my <laughs> Japanese apartment. I probably should stop at Chuko. Um, but, you know, I, I also let Maurice know that, you know, if he happens across any old pots, that he doesn't mind shipping north, I'd I'd be happy to take more. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a rabbit hole, and it's also like I and I've said it on the show before. I've realized that that if if I could drink one thing, you know, if I could bring one alcohol with me to, you know, the desert island and that kind of concept, it would absolutely be long aged uh, pot awamuri. So it's good stuff. Yeah. We got a, one one final question, I think, and again from Chris Caldwell, who's yep. thank you very much for for watching and following along with us. He's wondering, are there any pots that survived World War II? As many of you will know, Okinawa was shelled mercilessly during the Second World War. Are you aware of any, Stephen? So, uh, actually, in my book, we I talked about how all of the old store stores from the um, from the distilleries that were all based around Shuri Castle uh, were completely destroyed. All of those pots were gone. The, the, the three days of bombardment from the American Navy guns just completely leveled the entire area. Nothing survived. Uh, it, it took them a couple of years to even find any koji spores uh, from, that, from a distillery in that area to, to start to revive the industry. Um, but we actually learned on this trip and we'll try to get more information that there is some, uh, there are some old pots that survived that are apparently being kept somewhere else on the island. Uh, but we, we just heard about it. So we don't actually have any information other than the fact that I think it's that what's in those pots is over a hundred years old. Now, mm. whether that's gone through this Shitsugi blending and, and that there's younger spirit in there as well, we have no idea. Uh, but it appears there may be some of this stuff still around. Um, what was the, we, we tried some very old awamori at Soko, right? Do you remember how old that was? But it no, was very I old. do not recall. It's definitely the oldest awamori I had tried. Um, but we had a few drinks that night. We did. <laughs> and, I, and I don't think we were taking notes. I guess we got to we start taking notes. Yep. Um, but yeah, so there are places we can find pretty old awamori around around the city. That's the other thing is, you know, if you're not looking to spend hundreds of dollars and all the hassle of carrying these pots back to back home, then you find a few of the great awamori bars and just try great things and then save your next chance to try them for the next time you, you visit, right? Because everyone should go to Okinawa periodically, I think. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. It's good for the <laughs> the soul. It's good for the cockles of the heart, right? and I think uh, I think it's going to add years to my life, provided I don't drink too much awamori while I'm here, <laughs> which I've I've managed to take a couple of nights off now that 
now that Stephen has retreated back to the mainland, not the mainland, to Kyushu. Um, yeah. And I think we can... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little distracted. I have all these controls at my fingertips where I can add banners and questions, as you may have seen. Yeah, uh, this is probably why the show, show producers tend to be behind the scenes rather than on camera. <laughs> yep, exactly. It's uh, So probably half the time, and I know that somebody made the comment already, I look like I'm, I had a rough night and that I, I didn't get enough sleep. It's because I'm like, I'm actually trying to stare directly into an LED light and, and figure out what to put on screen next. And one thing I need to do right now is get rid of this comment and hide that. Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah another deep dive into Awamori. That's two in a row. I don't know if we'll be able to avoid it next week either, but um, I think by the end of the month, we'll, be, we'll have moved on back to uh, what we often talk about which is shochu we haven't talked about shochu for a long time which is kind of weird no, we haven't. well you can't find uh, much of it in in okinawa there isn't you really can't it. there is not i know of one one shochu like true shochu bar here that i've been to a, a couple of times and it's actually not far from where i'm staying it's expensive they have a mm -hmm. great selection a really really good selection i would say there's at least i would say three to four hundred brands in there and they have good stuff so if you really get thirsty for shochu while you're visiting Okinawa and not just the main island, Bill did ask the question, like, are there any other places to go? Absolutely try to get out to Kumejima, which is a nice, quiet little place. Get to Miyakojima and uh, Ishigakijima, which are way further closer to Taiwan, actually. Lovely, lovely places to visit with Awamori distilleries galore and lots of wonderful local folks to meet and talk to and learn from. Uh, the people here are much friendlier than they are where I live up in Tokyo. <laughs> they, uh, that's for better or worse, they, they will want to engage and you will probably make some fast friends, which is always nice when you're traveling. Um, yeah, Sh Sh Shochu is coming soon, but I'm very happy to be in the in the embrace of awamori for a while yeah no it's it was a as i said it was you know the, the most time i'd been able to spend there and i just i learned so much there were so many conversations that we had with various locals that knew a lot about the drinks you know uh our last night actually that i was there we went to their yatai mura which basically is a small little outdoor village of these drinking stalls of course they have food and it's all the local cuisine and you could choose based on what you want to eat and what you want to drink but we stumbled into this one that had 86, 85, 86 different awamori, but it wasn't like 86 standard things. No, it there was, was some stuff. amazing and some old bottlings, some unicorns, right? Like, I think a couple of the bottles, one of them was like, yeah, one of one of 60. They only bottled yeah. 60, right? right? That's right. And it was yeah. like a one of one of 20, like stuff mm -hmm. that just you can't find. Um, yeah. So really, really enjoyed that that evening out. Um, my liver's. Do you remember the last? I think the last place we went into, they <laughs> they uh, you know because they do the they do the temperature check when you go in just to make sure mm -hmm. that you know you know contact tracing the whole nine yards. And they and at this place they were like, if you can guess your your temperature, you get a free drink. And I guessed mine correctly, which I have never done before. And then you guessed yours correctly. So the guy was like, <laughs> damn it, I got just got two yahoos in here. Neither of them have to pay now. So we ended up, we ended up uh, staying. That we stayed for a couple of drinks just because we wanted to give him some money. It turns out that the guy was from Kagoshima, so we had lots to talk about. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah that was very fun. Yeah, that was a that was, was a a definitely a fun night. Fun night out. But my liver is glad that I'm back in Fukuoka and have been able to take a little, <laughs> little drinking holiday. Because um, it was that was you know we tend to really enjoy our nights out together. So yep, it's true. It's yep. very true, right. and as usual, this was another enjoyable discussion about uh, Japanese drinks from the from the two nerds behind Japan Distilled podcast, and a, a little bit of some other content. And you can, of course, grab us again here next week, same time, same place. You got any any closing thoughts, Stephen? Um, no, I, I mean, I just I think um, I, I like how this new format's going. I'm getting used to it. I figured out a way where I. I can position where you are on my screen that makes it look like I'm looking at you to the center rather than looking off to the other side of the screen. So 
we'll get better at this. Um, but yep. really appreciate everybody's questions, comments, uh, engagement. Again, if you have any topics you'd like us to discuss on future episodes of Show Tuesday, we'd love to hear them. And also, of course, podcast episodes. And again, rate, review, share, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, with the podcast, because the more attention the podcast gets, the more people will find it. And the sooner we can make Shochu, Awamori, and other Japanese spirits grow. Love it. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching another episode, the 43rd episode of Show Tuesday. We'll be back again on in your Facebook feed, in your YouTube feed, wherever you're enjoying this from, at 10 a.m. next Wednesday, the 24th of this month, which due to daylight savings in the United States and perhaps other parts of the world, that may have gotten a little bit later for you. And if so, sorry, but we're, we're keeping it at 10 a.m. We are not getting up <laughs> early earlier. I'm really sorry. Um, it's going to stick to JST. And until that time, wherever you are in the world, from both of us here in Japan, a very hearty and heartfelt kanpai. Kanpai. <laughs>